See, we're wrestling with the devil and we don't even know it. Yeah, we're wrestling with the devil and we don't even know it. Check this out in Ephesians chapter 6, it says this, we do not wrestle against the flesh or the blood, but against spiritual forces of darkness in the heavenly realms. See, the devil be trying to put us in a chokehold. He's trying to choke us out, right? He's trying to choke us out with a thing called cycle of sin. He's trying to put us asleep in the cycles of sin. You might be asking MacGyver, what in the world is a cycle of sin? It can be a multiple different things. See, you know, in jiu-jitsu, they have multiple different ways to get the same outcome. And see, it's it's different with everybody else. Some cycles of sin can be, for others, alcohol. Some cycle of sin can be drugs. It can be sex. It can be all these different things of uh, cycles, of submission holds. The devil try to put you in. But do I have any wrestlers on this broadcast? Do I have any wrestlers as friends? I, I believe I do. And they know, man, when someone's trying to come at you, when someone's trying to come at you, what do you do? You sprawl out of it. Some of you need to get on your knees. Some of you need to get on your knees to God and pray, Jesus, I don't want to be on this chokehold no more. See, sprawling, what it does, you get on your knees and you and you push the person away. You push the person away so you can create distance, so that you can create distance so that you can be on your own terms. You can attack on your terms. See, Christians need to wake up and we need to sprawl out of that chokehold the devil's trying to put in our lives. See, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. He wants to give you life and life more abundantly. He wants to give you the strategies to get away from those chokeholds of the enemy. And I gave you those chokeholds. It can be addiction. It can be it can be too much time on, on the internet. I know this sounds weird, but God has a way. It pleases him this way, that the things that are foolish to a man, he actually is great wisdom. You got to you gotta be born again. Nicodemus said that. How do I be born again? Do I go to back to my mother? It's like, ew, gross, Nicodemus. No, we got to be renewed in our minds. The battle is in the mind. The devil try to put you to sleep in the mind. He's trying to choke off that circulation in the brain so that you just become numb to his attacks. You just become numb and to say, well, this is how it's always going to be. This is how my life is going to live. My dad was this way, so I'm going to live this way. No, that's not your story. That is not your story. See, when you come under a new coach, the playbook changes. You've been playing with the same playbook for years, but the Holy Spirit's your new coach when you're a Christian, and he's giving you an entirely new playbook. And it's up to us to learn that playbook. And where's the playbook located? Where can I get my hands on the playbook? Man, it's the Word of God. It's the Bible. You got to spend some time in that playbook. You can't just, if you're a football player, come on, I was in high school, you can't expect to win the game if you never look at the enemy's playbook. You got to study them. Man, we went on huddle and we studied the videos. We can see like, oh, he, this guy's moving right here. So it's got to be this. They're in this formation. There's only amount of different plays that they can play in this formation. So it is with the spirit, man. So it is with the devil. And when you get into, when you see those formations, you know, he's going to come at you in this way. Come on. You know the cycle. You've been in some cycles. I'm here to wake you up. I'm here to let you know that you're not alone, that you're not alone with this anxiety. You're not alone with this depression. You're not alone in this addiction. There's a lot of people that go through it. God saved me from my sin. Come on, somebody. I'm not no perfect. No one gets five stars. I don't get five stars. But Jesus, Holy Spirit, our body is weak, but the spirit is willing. Live in the spirit. So, so many of us are, are like this. Ready? I'm going to flip it. Is we have the flesh and then we have the spirit. And the spirit's actually supposed to be subjective to the flesh. But we live in a culture, and no one teaches this thing, that we have allowed our flesh to be our God and our spirit to just be quiet. We'll, we'll let the spirit be spoken of on Sundays, and we'll live in the spirit for two hours on Sundays, but then we'll go back to our fleshly things right after. And in this, and God is spirit. Come on, we worship God in spirit and in truth. We got. How do you? How do you flip the script on that, MacGyver? It's all about that fasting life. Come on, do I have anybody that has fasted on this broadcast? Does anybody know the power of fasting? Man, if you haven't fasted, you're missing out on the big piece about Christianity. Fasting empties yourself out so that Holy Spirit can fill you in. Come on, fasting empties yourself out so the Holy Spirit can fill you in. 
Jesus is looking for people that are available. He wants to turn you into a, a, a bench seated, uh, a bench warmer into a champion. Come on, he wants to change you into a champion. You are a champion in Christ. You're more than a conqueror than Christ. I hope I convinced you of that, but really, my job's off. It's the Holy Spirit that gets to do the work. I'm just living the life of a Christian, living life on the victorious side. You gotta speak life, come on. Man, you're, if you're in battle, the, the enemy's gonna trash talk you. Look at Goliath. Goliath was trash talking David the whole way. The Goliath was trash chalking him the whole way. You're a kid, man. You're coming at me with a stick and a stone. Who are you? I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna like rule you over. I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing, paraphrasing the MacGyver translation. Come on, somebody, read the book, read the story for yourself, and it's really gonna be awesome. And David, man, he came back. He's like, who are you, you uncircumcised Philistine? I'm coming at you in the name of the Lord. You're gonna fall. I'm gonna feed your head to the carcass, to the birds of the sky. I mean, that was that's some graphic stuff, man. He's a he's. A, he's a believer. He's a guy with a heart after God's own heart. He's a he's a guy after God's own heart. We gotta know we can't be soft, Christians. We can't be soft towards the enemy. The enemy's trying to play for keeps. The enemy's trying to take out your life. He's trying to choke hold you out. But man, we we wrestle with this stuff. We say, uh-uh, G- uh-uh, devil. Uh-uh. No, 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 no. I'm sprawling out of this. I'm sprawling out of this bitterness. I'm sprawling out of this offense. I'm sprawling out of this argument. And I'm choosing love. I'm choosing grace. I'm choosing faithfulness. I'm choosing words of encouragement instead of tearing down. Come on. Because God's already tore down the walls in my life. He's already tore down the obstacles towards Him into the promised land. And one last thing. I know it's a little off topic, but I got this revelation. See, God has given us the promised land. But there's giants still in the land. If you read the story, there were still giants in the land. And we got to take out these giants. Come on, somebody. Could could I submit to you that God has already given you the promised land? But we're missing the we're missing the whole land because we're not, we see the giants. We still see those big obstacles in the way. But God is faithful and just, and he's gonna see it to the end. But you gotta surrender your life. Here's the key word: surrender. Come on. Surrender to Christ. You gotta surrender to render the thoughts of God. Because our old mindset is not the way, man. I'm telling you, you can be laughing at me. You can be mocking me right now. You'd be like, man, this guy is way out in cuckoo land. But there's gonna come a day where you're gonna have to bow down to Jesus. And you're gonna be like, whoa, this crazy radical MacGyver was right. And I'm just letting you know that you're missing out. If you're thinking that your cop out is just to get to heaven one day, you're missing the whole point of why Jesus came. Jesus came so that he can put the Holy Spirit in us, the same Holy Spirit that was in Jesus, you know, that he did the radical healings, the miracles, the all the cool stuff that I geek out about. That same spirit is in you. It's the He wants to give you the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And some of us think the Holy Spirit's a babysitter, but the Holy Spirit is a friend. Fellowship is what friends do. Friends share, friends care, friends do things together, they solve difficult problems. But many of us, we feel the Holy Spirit is like a babysitter. They just, he does enough and tells us no, 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 no. It's just like, if you feel like that, you're right. But man, he wants to, he wants to move from a babysitter to a true, true friend. And you gotta accept the friend request, come on. It's up to us to accept the friend request. It's up to us to open up that gift. It's up to us to listen to our coach. It's up to us to sprawl out of that and, and gain distance so that we can fight the enemy. Don't be chokehold no longer when you don't need to when you don't need to. Get into the prayer room, guys. Read your word. It's not going to come from a podcast. This this nine minutes, this ten minutes is not going to be enough for what you need. You need to spend time in the word for yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. Hey, Holy Spirit, I have no idea what I'm doing. Don't even know what I'm reading. And it's going to be rough in those first, in those years, man. But God's going to come through. He's going to give you grace. He's going to give you understanding. He wants to give you the whole revelation of Christ. He wants to give you the whole revelation of his word, of of Jesus. That's not my words. That's in the Bible. Read it for yourself. Man, there's so much life in this thing. God wants to give you living water. 
There's, I mean, you can just keep going. This, this prayer train, this, this preaching train can just keep going and going, but I need to stop. I want to keep it as, as small as possible so people can, can really uh, listen to this. It's powerful. I hope you get something out of it. Share it, man. Click the like, click the share, subscribe, whatever you got to do. Man, I just love Jesus and I want him to be known in you and I want you to be the best version of yourself. I want to be the best version. I'm chasing after this thing. I'm going in that fire. Come on, because he's in the fire. He's in that fire. So, yeah. If you're looking for where do I start, where do I start, go to Romans. Just go to Romans and and just see what God unveils there. There's a lot of great verses that I think um, will help you out in, in, the, in the first steps of this journey. So, God bless. Stay encouraged. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. I'm not... I'm not trying to go off the rail and autopilot. I need to sit, I need to let you know. I'm looking your eye. I know I'm, I'm already kind of freaking you out because I'm looking at you intentionally. And I'm saying Jesus loves you. He knows your story. He actually wants to rewrite some stuff so that you can get away from all the past. See, why? the reason why I'm a Christian is because he's trying to take me from my past and put me into a promised land in my future. But I got to stay present. I got to stay focused today. And focus is not something you have. It's something you do. And you got to focus on Jesus to get through this storm. And Jesus is in the storm as well. I mean, he's in everything. Really. I mean, he's in everything. And uh, I'm so excited because I know that when I'm speaking this truth and I know it's going to hit your heart and the Holy Spirit's going to do some crazy stuff. You might feel goosebumps, but you might not. It's okay because God's not just a feeling. We can't narrow him down just to goosebump feelings. If you don't feel him, that doesn't mean he's not operating. Come on. He's doing, he's doing some work. So just allow him. Just keep pressing into him, saying, God, I have no idea what I'm doing. Spirit, lead me. And, and allow time to go. Allow the time to just be what it is, and he's going he's gonna to speak to you. He's going to speak to you, man. And uh, just don't be afraid of what he asks of you, because he's going to give you a great return on your investment. Amen? Amen. I got to get off this thing. Thank you. Love you. God bless.